Hey everyone, Chat Cemetery is back. Today I am joined once again by Bryant Burnett. I'm your host, Deanna Chapman, of course, and today we are going to be talking about the Dark Man poem, which, if you haven't heard of this, I think that's okay. It's something that is not super common, and, you know, it's really only like a page and a half poem. So if anyone is curious, I think there are ways to find it. You know, there's also, Bryant, I know you mentioned an illustrated book, right? Do you have that? I, I do, yeah. It came out in um, 2013, I think. Uh, it was okay. the thing that Cemetery Dance did. Yeah, and that was the published date I ended up using for this podcast. One, because I didn't really know about this poem until I think after I had already started the podcast. And I was like, oh, okay, I'll toss that in and just kind of use the published date for the illustrated version. But I do know it was written in like 69 or 70, right? Yeah, somewhere in his college uh, years. Yeah, which is crazy. And it tells the story of Randall Flagg. So it has our Dark Tower ties right away. And he goes by so many different names. I was actually just discussing the wind through the keyhole where he goes by Martin and he goes by the Covenant Man. And in this, he is the Dark Man. So Bryant, was this something you sought out while you were reading the Dark Tower series? Was it something you knew about beforehand or did you find out about it after? That's a good question. I don't I don't know for a fact if I remember. I think <laughs> that it was probably due to reading a book called uh, The Lost Work of Stephen King that a guy okay. named uh, Stephen Spignesi put out in the late 90s that was just kind of an overview of all these obscure corners of Stephen King's universe that had uh, information on various short stories that had never been included in any of his books and things of that nature. So I think I probably first heard about it there, but it okay. was years before I you know, was able to find any evidence of its actual existence. And this isn't something that's necessarily an easy read. So for anyone who hasn't read it, here's your trigger warning that it does describe a rape by the end of it. And with it being so short, you get to that very quickly. And it's almost unexpected with the way that the poem starts. And then you're just kind of reading through it and you're like, oh, he's kind of confessing to something here. It is a very shocking moment when it gets to it. And I I think it may actually be a rape murder. So it's even worse than it seems. Yeah. And there's a, kind of an interesting thing that he does. There's if I remember correctly, there's only one capital letter in the entire poem, which, you know, is the kind of thing that people writing poetry tend to do to draw attention to it. And it's it comes at that exact moment. Yeah. Yeah, it's where that last stanza there starts. And hopefully I'm using the correct term there. <laughs> but mm -hmm. one thing I found interesting was that the first section ends with I am a dark man, as does the last. So it kind of brings it full circle within these five sections or stanzas, if you will. And, you know, like I told you when we were planning this, this probably isn't going to be a long episode, but I just thought it was very interesting because one, not only is it brutal, but two, it's this pre-stand, pre-Dark Tower version of Randall Flagg. And you can see through this poem that King could have gone even darker with that character. Yeah, there's a, a couple of interesting things that I wanted to point out in terms of this connecting to the stand. First of all, the first time that we meet Randall Flagg in the stand, he's just sort of walking along the road. So it's almost like he's, you know, kept walking uh, after this poem until we meet him in the stand. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. But there's also a couple of lines that I want to draw attention to in the poem where he's talking about having heard from the outside the inside clink of cocktail ice while closed doors broke the world. This is kind of interesting to me because it connects to that notion of uh, being an outsider, which is a thing that comes up in King's work pretty frequently. And 
when you encounter it, most of the time it's referring to some sort of being from the outside of normal existence. But there's uh, there's something that Tom Cullen actually says in the stand that arguably connects to this. And this is when he's been hypnotized and he's talking about Randall Flagg. And he says this. He says, he's always outside. He came out of time. He doesn't know himself. He has the name of a thousand demons. His name is Legion. He's afraid of us. We're inside. He knows magic. He calls the wolves and lives in the crows, but he's afraid of us. He's afraid of inside, which, you know, you could debate what that actually means, but it's just kind of interesting that there's a thing in this poem that kind of speaks to what Tom Cullen is talking about in that scene. And I wouldn't put it past King to have this little poem tie in in that kind of way to the stand by any means, but... Because it's been quite a while and I've read so many books since reading The Stand. I'm glad you picked up on that. And I think this is something that, again, not something you really need to read necessarily if you want to read The Stand and the Dark Tower books. But it's one of those fun little additions to Randall Flagg's character. Not necessarily fun, but, you know, I I like that King does these things. Yeah. If nothing else, it's just cool and interesting that there is any kind of connection between the two at all. I mean, this is a poem that Stephen King wrote, you know, somewhere in college. So probably 68, 69, something like that. And then he hangs on to things in this poem for an entire decade (laughs) into his professional career. That's just that that's an interesting piece of evidence as to just how well his work really does hang together. I always wonder if he just kind of stashes these things away because from what we know of King obviously he wasn't typing these and saving files on a computer back in the 60s, 70s, 80s, even 90s probably <laughs> knowing him and who knows if he even does it that way today. He really likes to use a typewriter, write things longhand and It's amazing that some of this stuff didn't just get lost. Yeah, it really is. It had been published while he was in college, just in, I don't remember the name of it, but... Ubris, I think? Yeah, which was uh, a literary journal uh, for the University of Maine. So there were copies of it out there, and still are. I I shudder to think how expensive those are at this point. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that's why when I looked at like the illustrated version that Cemetery Dance put out, I believe, I was kind of just browsing on eBay or something. And I was like, nope, I will not buy one of these. I, I, I never even looked those up. Like that's, in theory, I would love to have a copy of that, but I don't think I could bring myself to spend whatever that would cost, just under any circumstances. Yeah, because I know it was a limited run. It looks like they're going for over, well over $100. Some of them, you know, even more, creeping up to the 200 range at least. And I'm like, okay, it's a good poem, but it's not that good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the illustrated edition is interesting to see. The art is by a guy named Glenn Chadbourne, who does a lot of stuff for Cemetery Dance. And uh, he's got an interesting style. The way the book is laid out, it's basically, I think I remember this correctly, I think it's a drawing for every line of the poem. That would make sense, because I think it's about 88 pages. And I know this poem isn't 88 lines by any means, but it's probably either that or like a two-page spread for each line. Yeah, uh, there are a few of those for sure. Um, And that's, that's an interesting way to break a poem up. It doesn't really make for a particularly great read, especially since it's, you know, not exactly that great a poem in the first place. It's got its moments, but this is not uh, high caliber poetry by any means. No. But, you know, it's interesting that uh, that they were able to get that out in the world for King fans to see. If nothing else, it's worth looking at. Yeah, and obviously if King was fantastic at poetry. He would also be a poet, which he is not. He is a novelist and he likes very lengthy things. So the brevity of this is a little breather for you too. Yeah. Actually, you know, I I 
have a dim memory of having read an interview with King once upon a time where he talked about the fact that he actually writes quite a bit of poetry. Uh, he just very rarely publishes any of it. The interviewer asked him how many there were, and he, he said there might be several hundred poems that he's written that are just kind of sitting around someplace. So who knows? Interesting. I wonder if it's because he thinks they're not good enough to release or what, but that's definitely very interesting. But Bryant, do you have anything about this poem in particular that you wanted to mention real quick before we wrap up here? Uh, no, I think I, I think I mentioned the stuff that I thought was worth uh, getting into. It's okay. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where it's cool to check it out, but it's not necessary. And like I said, I really just kind of needed a breather in between book episodes here because I've been doing a lot of reading lately. So this was a nice little break for me. Hopefully it's a nice little break for the listeners too before we hit Dr. Sleep next week. Yeah, nice to have a breather every once in a while, that's for sure. Yeah, well, Bryant, thank you so much for coming on to quickly talk about The Dark Man. My pleasure. All right, that does it for this episode of Chat Cemetery. You can support the podcast on Patreon for a dollar a month. You'll get a thank you on the show for $2 a month. I will send you a Chat Cemetery sticker. And if you want to follow us on social media, you can do so at Chat Cemetery on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. You could also rate and review the show. That's a huge help. And as always, thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Mm-hmm.